We're going to use uh, MathCAD to show how to do a worst case analysis of a simple voltage divider where we have a VREF, R1 and R2. Um, our requirements are going to be V in is 5.1 plus or minus 2 percent. Uh, v out is supposed to be 3.3 and R1 and R2 were calculated from our ratio program from before. Where we set up our ratio program in Excel and uh, got the values out. That's 10.2k plus or minus 1% and 18.7k plus or minus 1%. So we set this up where we have 10.2k for R1, 18.7k for R2, and VREF is 5.1. Those are all the nominal values. We define an equation for V out nom, VREF times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, and we can see that our output is exactly, in this case, 3.3 volts. We can rearrange this equation so we can uh, look at something here by inspection, uh, which is nothing more than VRF divided by the quantity R1 divided by R2 plus 1. And we can see we still get the 3.3 volt output. At this point we're going to define some tolerancing for our components. The tolerance for the resistors is 1%, and for VRF it's 2%. So we can solve for the worst case by inspection. We can see that uh, if, if R1 goes up in value, then V out is going to go down. If R2 goes up in value, V out is going to go up. So our first case here is going to be where R1 goes down in value and R2 goes up in value and I get 3.39 volts. Second case is where R1 goes up in value and R2 goes down in value. That's going to give us 3.211 volts. Of course, they do the same thing for VREF in both cases here. So this is my maximum value, my inspection max value, and my inspection low value. And we're going to come down here and use the classical partial derivatives times a component uh, delta to come up with the change in output voltage based on the, the uh, slope of the partial derivatives. And we uh, declare all the uh, partial derivatives for dr1, dr2, and dvref. Uh, we find out what their sensitivities are here, and we can see, of course, that dvref is the most sensitive in this case. Uh, we then define the change in resistance based on the tolerance for the resistors and for the reference. And again, we can see the reference is uh, quite high. We then take the delta, re the delta resistance and delta VRF and multiply it times the slope of the derivatives to get the change in voltage, the output voltage from nominal. And we have our three selections here. We can then do an EVA by taking uh, the absolute value of the three uh, components that are going to vary and adding it to V out nom, and we get 3.89 volts, 3.389 volts, and the minimum is 3.211. We will compare these later when we get uh, completed with uh, some other methods here. The um, RSS is uh, strictly shown here for uh, um, purposes of uh, completeness and here we're going to take the, uh, the sum of the squares to get the uh, delta we're going to add it to the nom here to get the max and we're going to subtract it from the nom to get the min. So the last method we're going to do is we're going to take and find a new value for the resistor based on the direction of the sensitivity. So here we can see that R1 nu positive in the positive direction is going to be the slope. If the slope is greater than zero, then we're going to increase the value of R1 by its tolerance. So we have R1 times 1 plus R tall. Now if this is negative, then we subtract. We lower the value of R1. And the same thing holds true for R2. This is in the positive direction, which means that if the slope is positive, the new value will be will go up. If the slope is negative, the new value will go down.
that is the positive sense for when we do this type of uh, analysis. We then uh, come up with our new values for the two resistors. We throw them into our equation and we can see that the uh, new value is 3.39 volts. We then have to do it for the negative sense where if the slope uh, goes up, if the slope is positive, then we have to reduce the value of the new value. So if the slope is negative, uh, we want the uh, new value to go up and if it's positive we want it to go down and we get our two new values put them into our equation and we see we have 3.221 volts now comparing them they're, they're very close in value except of course for the RSS let me just move these out of the way a little bit move these two up and we can see that the inspection value and the positive and negative sense values are exact where the EVA values are slightly off for this case and there's a reason for that and what we can do is we can take and create a function for my output voltage based on R1 and R2 uh, select a range variable that I can multiply either R1 or R2 by and see what happens to the output voltage as R1 or R2 changes and that's what this graph here shows. We can see that these, the change in output voltage is monotonic positive uh, for R2 and it's, pos and it's monotonic negative for R1. And of course they, when they, where they cross at 1 is where we're going to get our 3.3 volts. So when we do the partial derivative times the change in resistance, we're actually finding a voltage that is tangent to this curve right in here and so it, we're not going to get the exact value and in this case here since the, uh, the it, it looks very linear in this region we're going to get a slight difference off the actual true value now what's going to happen in real life when we have a very complicated circuit like a comparator uh, these um, the slopes get much worse and the, the divergence between the partial derivative method and the by inspection or the method that we're going to use in PSPICE is the method that's shown here where we actually find the new value of the resistor based on the slope of the sensitivity plug it back into the equation to find my new value and so we're going to do that in the next video to show that to validate the uh, p-spice uh, does in fact uh, correspond to uh, this method. It makes life a lot easier when we get into very complicated circuits as we'll be showing in subsequent videos. So we'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.